So, if you download the dungeon file, you will, when you open it, look at something like this. Um, and you may look at this and be like, well, this is a fairly you know, simple model. However, it is basically completely procedural. Um, so we can input some sort of geometry, and from that geometry we can automatically generate a pretty complicated result with stairs and wall segments and balustrades and you know, some additional detail. And, you know, I kept this file pretty simple, but you can imagine again you could have different types of wall segments and all kinds of other things. Um, so let's sort of dive into how this works. Um, and again, like I want to stress that this is completely procedural, right? We can actually grab. Oh, whoops, pressed the wrong button. Um, we can grab uh, any of these faces and we can move them around. So if I were to want to move this face, and I drag it over here, and we look at the end result of this, like it has completely changed our dungeon. So we can just move this around and our dungeon just regenerates. Um, so it truly is completely procedural. Um, get rid of that little edit and so let's see how does this thing work so the first thing you can see is we calculate some normals so we basically uh, have a direction that we've calculated for each face and you can tell I'm doing this for primitives and I'm not doing this uh, on the points or on the vertices that I normally do because I really want to find specific um, polygons. So we're going to split here, and split is basically deleting two different things in different directions. So in this case, we're finding all the wall sections, and then we're going to find all the square wall sections, and on the other hand, we're going to sit, we're going to try and find all the triangles that are on the side of uh, stairs. So what we're going to do with these square wall sections is, well, we're going to divide them more and we're going to replace that section by this wonderful model that I, that I made here. It's a beautiful model, but it could, it could be anything, like you can have actual photo scanned tiles, whatever, whatever it is, just wanted to keep it simple. And so you can plug that in here and you can see that it's replaced our input, which is, you know, just simple polygons by these wall segments. So how does this thing work? Well, for each primitive, so in this case, we're grabbing one of the many primitives, we're looping over all the primitives, we're going to, again, we're going to calculate the normal, in this case we're doing it on the points, and we're going to carve, and we're going to just keep the edges. And after we keep the edges, we're going to sort them by height, and then we're going to keep the bottom section of it, and we're going to resample that if necessary, so that if it's very long, we can have multiple segments. Basically, um, for each um, segment, we're going to place a model. Now, aside from that, we're also going to calculate a couple values. So we're going to calculate the height, so we're going to measure the height of this segment and we're going to measure the length of one segment as well. We're going to measure the width of that. So we're going to make sure we don't, we just keep uh, every point except the very first because we don't want to place a point. We, we don't want to copy anything to points that um, are ending. So this is what it's going to do for us. Now if I didn't delete that that final point, we would get this. So if we look at our input, we really want to only place our input, which is this guy. I'm just going to place them all here so I can see this. Um, we only want to place our model from here to here, right? So this, we just want to keep the bottom right corner. So that's why this guy is here. So the difference that that makes is that we just want to place it onto the one point because we're copying to each point. Now, when we do that for everything, we get this results. But let's try and look at another iteration of this. 
So here we go. This is a nice example. So in this case, we've got our incoming primitive. We're going to keep the bottom section of it. And when we resample, you can see that it's cut into two parts. And so again, we're going to delete the very first point. So we keep two points to keep for our two segments. And that's our output. So again, when we, when we run this entire thing, we've got all our walls decorated. That's a pretty good start. If we've got our walls together with the floor, you know, it's a, that's a pretty good start. Um, but there's definitely some more stuff. So the main thing that we're missing right now is adding the stairs. So let's take a look at how the stair generator works. So again, we find, we find the floor, and then we're going to split that into, again, the floor and the actual stair uh, slanted geometry. And we do this, again, by looking at the angle of the normal. If, that, if the y component, so the up component of the normal, is um, bigger than 0 0.9, then we're going to split it. And we've already split to make sure that it's um, uh, less than a half. So we know we basically have gotten like those two queries together, make sure that we find everything that's either basically almost completely flat or at an angle then which would require stairs. So we take these stairs, we take the stair size, and we're just going to combine them. Uh, we're going to do a quick fuse. And then we're going to go into the stair maker. And the stair maker basically just takes these shapes and makes them into stairs. So how does this thing work? Now, this thing is a little bit more complex when we go into it, but don't be too scared yet because it's honestly not too bad. So the first thing we have is we've got this thing that says find connected points, and it's going to create an attribute. In this case, it's called stairway. And we're going to loop over that attribute. And what that does is that for Every poly for all the polygons that are connected, they're all going to get the same ID. So this might be 0, this might be 1, and this might be 2. And so when this thing goes to loop over things, it's always going to keep an entire staircase at once that we're going to work over. So we're going to split it again, we're going to find the sides, and we're going to carve these sides. And on the other hand, we've got the original surface, and we're just going to color it. And you can see that when I transfer the color, these two points, because they were all originally, uh, they were all originally um, white, um, when I transfer the color to the black, to the points that are close to the black points uh, that ma match this thing, we get this nice mask where we can find uh, the points that we want to get rid of. Now, what we can then do is we can uh, promote that color and we can promote it to the maximum value. So we go from points to primitives. And we end up with these clearly marked sides. Now what we can do is we can just keep the two sides. And in this case, I do reverse them, and I sort them by the vertex order. Um, basically, I just wanted to make sure that I get the correct section for it. Um, but don't worry about it too much a little unclear. After this, what we're going to do is we're going to resample these. And you can see here that I've, I've made a little expression that says the arc length of my input node inputs 0, and then length 0 to 1, and then multiplying that times 10. So we're, we're looking at the geometry in this node the first primitive, so primitive 0, and then measure length 0 to 1, and then doing that number times 10, which gives us, in this case, 11 segments. So we're basically, depending on how long this is, really defines how many steps we're going to get. And we can skin this to basically get a primitive for each step. After we're going to do this, we're going to say for each step, we're going to flatten you, which is the easy bit. And now we need to generate the front of this guy. 
Now, you can already see that I need to go from this point to this point. So we can just keep these two points right here, and we can keep the two other points from the other result, and then we can make that into two lines. And when we skin those two lines together, we combine the result, we get a step. So where we originally had a flat plane, we now have a step. We fuse this together, we do this for all the steps, and voila, we've got stairs, which is pretty neat. Um, and what's also kind of neat about this is that it's actually pretty, pretty robust. So if we were to, to be here, let's say that this stair was, was a slightly different shape. Let's say it looked like this. Because we're looking, we're, we're measuring along the length here, it's still going to, oh, I do have to keep the horizontal, but it is still going to work. Um, let's see if I can do a slightly better job of that. I hate that they've made these things a little bit less clear, but it's unfortunate. So when we go over here, you can see that it's that it's staying, it's it stays pretty robust. Now the only reason this is failing is because my my little gimbal here is at an odd angle, and because it's at an odd angle, it's, it's creating some problems for me. But um, you get the idea. It can be slanted. It, can, it doesn't have to be an exactly straight shape. Now. This, however, is a pretty boring side. So what we really want to do is we want to add, you know, some si some starts and endings. So you know, nothing too fancy. We just take the input and we copy a certain end piece to each point. But we also want to add some uh, some railings on the side here. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to uh, copy to each of these points, we're going to copy a piece of stone. I just, you know, made a simple piece of stone. Um, and now when we add all these things together, we're getting pretty close. Um, so let's just disconnect these two things real quick. So what have we got now? We've got these sort of stairs, and that's pretty good. But we also want a railing, so we're just going to transform the same thing up. and we're going to take our input result here and we're going to resample it slightly more often. Again, basically the same expression, just changing some of the numbers on it at the end. And um, we're, we're basically placing a little cube there. So what you get out of this is a set of stairs. We just have to calculate some normals, make sure we repeat this process for every stair and here we go. So now we've got stairs, and we've got floors, and we've got walls. So this is starting to look pretty good, but there's a couple things that just, you know, pe people, people would fall off these edges, and so people like to build barriers. So how do we build barriers? So this one, this one's a little bit more interesting because this is not so geometrically complex, but it's more an interesting question of like, how do you find the edges where a barrier would be? And when you look at these two results, you're like, well, I can't really tell that there wouldn't be a barrier here, unless I also know that that's where the wall is. So you have to find this area where the floor meets the top edge of a wall. So. We're going to take a look inside and see how we're doing that. So, first thing we do is we take all the segments of the walls, we carve them like we did before, and then we keep the top section. So the only difference with what we were doing before with making the walls is we reverse the sort. So instead of keeping the bottom, we keep the top. So we keep all the top areas, and now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance from this 
to the distance of our um, of our floors, and we're going to delete everything that isn't super super close. Because you have to think about it this way: is that the top of the wall segment, if it is abutting a floor, it's literally going to be sharing vertices, so it should be super super close. After that. We basically use the exact same thing that we were using to place our wall segments. So we resample our section and we, um, we calculate the scale attribute and then we paste our geometry onto there and we repeat that for each section. Now when we add this in, we have some cool barriers right here along all these edges where otherwise you could fall off. Now the only thing that's really left is to add some stuff in the in the open spaces just like this. And really this is pretty simple. Basically we have a simple model of a table. Could be anything. We just scatter some points and based upon the size of the table what we're going to do is we're going to blast points that we don't want anymore. And in this case what we're saying is, is that we want a table to always make sure that there's enough space away from the wall so it fits. So our table is one unit long, so we're going to say everything less than one unit away from the wall needs to be destroyed. And then we've got a little bit of wiggle room, so we're saying if it's, you know, it's up to 40 centimeters away from the wall in this case. Now, if it's something else, you might have different rules on how to place things, but this just looked reasonably well. Now, after we've got this, what we can do is um, we can take all these guys and we fuse them together and we ray them and then we have our output. However, we have a slight problem because when we run this, you can see there might be a table in front of you know, a location where we don't want a table. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple second pass that's going to say, are you anywhere near any of these, um, any of our stairs? And if so, we're going to remove that as an option. And then again, we fuse based upon twice the distance of our object. We take the direction of the nearest wall, and then we're going to place our objects. And the nice thing about using the direction of the nearest wall means that we end up getting some pretty reasonable, you know, direction for these for these things to face, and we can change the global seed around so that we can have you know many variations of this. Um, we can have you know, a lot of variety. Um, cool. So when we put all these things together, we have a system that generates us a fairly convincing sort of manual built dungeon style uh, gener you know, yeah, generator that generates something like this. And really you can make anything you want with this. You can make this any shape. So you can, you know, you can grab any of these polygons and you can extrude them. You can do really whatever you want. So let's say we wanted to add some more space. Simply go in here, poly extrude this, we pull it back. Um, in this case, I'm just going to delete these two polygons because we don't we don't actually we want to look at this from the top down. So we want to make sure that we can see what we need to see. And when we go here, you can see that the system has added you know, a couple tables to fill the empty space, and all this um, all these walls have been filled in, in an interesting way. And you can you, know, you can really make anything you want. So I hope that was interesting to you. Um, I, uh, I tried to add some, some comments, not as many as with the other files, but if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to email me. Bye-bye.